In this video, I just wanted to go over the technique that I used to get rid of this crazy twist on a couple walnut slabs, and I ended up with a pretty dead flat tabletop that I'm really happy with. If you want to see the entire build video of that walnut table, there's a link in the description. Okay, so there are three different kinds of warps that you can actually fix with this method. There's a cup, a bow, and a twist. And this is sort of a diagonal top and front side view. We got the top view and the side view. So it's a little hard to see with my terrible drawing, but um, in this case, all the boards are fairly square. The, the other kind is a crook. A crook would be if the board is kind of like this from the top view. And we can't really do anything about that. Um, so we're going to focus on just the cup, the bow, and the twist. Um, with a cup, what you can do is make a bunch of stress relief cuts this way. And then in those stress relief cuts, you put wedges. So we're going to insert wedges in various places here. And the idea is when you um, you want to basically flatten out whatever the curve is. So in this case, these wedges would kind of apply pressure this way, and that would take that cup out of the board. Um, with a bow, same kind of thing. You want to put um, so in this case, you need to elongate it this way. So you would be putting stress relief cuts this way on the underside of the bow. Um, you can do it on the top and then the wedges would actually be smaller than the gap to kind of bring it in, but I've always found it easier to put them um, on the concave portion of whatever the warp is. So in this case, this, in this case the stress relief cuts would go on the bottom and then you put wedges in these spots. get rid of the bow. With a twist, it's interesting because it's it's almost kind of like a cup and a bow um, in the sense that, you know, this corner is high and this corner is high, this corner is low, and this corner is low. So um, from this side to this side, it's, it's kind of a cup. And then from this side to this side, it's a little bit of a bow almost. So uh, what I was doing to fix the twist was basically these long stress relief cuts here, this way. But then also, because I wanted to get rid of, uh, I wanted to lower this corner and lower this corner. Again, same thing, if it's, um, you want to get rid of the, the warp and flatten it out. So I did diagonal cuts here and here. And then um, also in a couple random spots, you know, you'll just have to play around with where you actually want to place the stress relief cuts. But same thing, you would put wedges in to spread this way, and then wedges in to force that corner back down. So a couple things to note here. Number one, you can actually make these cuts with circular saws or like a track saw or something like that. It's probably a lot easier. I wanted to have wider gaps um, because I wanted larger wedges that would be a little bit uh, less prone to compress over time. Um, and the table was extremely heavy, so I wanted to reduce some of the weight so I could actually move this thing around myself. Um, as far as depth, I'm actually going about an inch deep here, so I, uh, I'm doing eighth of an inch passes. It's a three-eighths spiral down cut bit that I'm using. Um, and I'm going about an inch because the ultimate board depth was about an inch and a half, if I remember correctly. Um, and that's because this was cut with a chainsaw sawmill and there were some pretty big gashes. You can kind of see some of the marks there. So I had to take quite a bit off the top and the bottom. Um, and being that the ultimate depth was going to be about an inch and a half, I wanted to do about an inch deep on these cuts. Alright, for these, I'm not going to do anything fancy, I'm not going to do butterflies. Um, I need to make sure I leave a little bit of a gap here for these little spacers. So these are going to be wedges uh, to prevent the cupping, the compression this way, and then these are also going to sort of stabilize the board, hopefully. 
So I'm just going to trace them out and then use the router to kind of, you know, same process. I'm going to take out about an eighth inch at a time, make sure I don't go too far towards this edge. This edge doesn't matter so much because I'm not worried about the compressive strength this way. I'm more worried about the twisting this way. So I'm going to uh, try to keep it, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch from this edge and then chisel out the rest by hand. Um, same thing here. And then I'm going to put these spacers in everywhere on both sides um, and do that maybe every, every 12 inches or so down the board. So just repeat that a billion times and it should be good to go. Here's a quick look at the bottom of both slabs before I join them together and add C-channel. There's quite a few stress cuts and, and wedges and things like that, but it really worked quite well. There's just a hair of a twist left and once I join them together and add C-channel, that goes away entirely. And this is just a quick montage of actually making these C-channels. These are um, eighth of an inch by two inch wide by about a half inch deep. Um, if you want to see a full video of this process, let me know in the comments below. After all was said and done between the C-channels and making these stress relief cuts and everything else, it was probably about 20 to 25 hours of work and it really paid off. This tabletop is just completely dead flat now. All right, the real question is, was this worth the time and effort? Um, I think the answer is yes, but you know, let's see. So if I peruse the internet for live edge slabs, some of these run, you know, several thousand dollars and to get book matched slabs, it's even more expensive typically. Um, and these prices are usually without freight as well. So when you add that, I mean, it's just a pretty expensive thing to get into. Um, these slabs I got on Craigslist for 400 bucks. So I think it was absolutely worth it.